you so much for joining me. And welcome to the 100k special Q&A. Oh, I've been waiting to say that for a long time. This is a very exciting video for me, uh, not just because I have Prosecco, which I've clearly already started on, but um, yes, this is a very exciting video for me to make. Um, I have been quietly anticipating making it for quite a while. I m kind of started thinking about making a celebration Q&A milestone celebration video around 50,000 subscribers and then that time came and went so I thought that I would push it to 75k and then that time came and went and then I before I knew it I was looking at 100,000 subscribers and I had a huge like growth spurt in like a week and a half because the fine brothers made a youtubers react to ASMR videos and one of my videos was featured and it was amazing and then I got to 100k and I was freaking out because I was like I'm not ready for this not like I was complaining please girl please but I was very excited but I was overwhelmed because I've been wanting to I don't know I've been pushing this video and part of the reason I was pushing it is because there are going to be quite a few questions that are going to be answered in this video and I'm not very good at thinking on my feet and I haven't scripted out any of the questions so I was, I'm, I'm very nervous about that because speaking extemporaneously is not really my forte speaking on the spot I just can't really articulate very well except with the written word so anyway but we're here and it's gonna be great right right and also, I will be um, drinking Prosecco, like, consistently throughout this video, so my questions may get more and more, um, the answers, the answers might get a little more tipsy-fied, so sorry for that. Sorry, not sorry, because tipsy is kind of fun every once in a while, every once in a while, guys. So anyway. Um, I'm excited to make this celebratory video. I'm kind of officially celebrating 100,000 even though I'm over that number by 10% now. <laughs> um, no, not 10%. That doesn't make any sense. Math, guys, it's not what I do. So anyway, I thought who better to celebrate with than you right there. You. Because, uh, because my channel, I think, has, has grown a lot, and I attribute a lot of that to you. Like, I, I created this channel, but you definitely collaborated with me, and I feel like it's kind of become a collective effort <laughs> maintaining it and, like, keeping it growing and, and evolving into what it is. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a result of all of our collective efforts, meaning you, uh, the anyone who has subscribed, anyone who has shared or favorited or just watched one video, um, hell, even anyone who's ever left a negative comment, because that's changed some things about how I do things as well, so um, to anyone who is also a creator of ASMR videos, you have no idea how much you inspire me pretty much every day, um, you've all impacted me for better or for worse, and uh, mostly better, and helped me make this channel what it is today, so for that I thank you. Um, yeah, I'm very, very, seriously very grateful for you who has, you who have stuck with me through thick and thin, and to any new subscribers. I hope that this video helps you to get to know a little more about me. And of course, to older subscribers, I hope you get to know me some more as well. So, um, yeah. So, um, the first question that I want to answer 
is why my channel name is Accidentally Graceful. Uh, I've addressed this before a long time ago, like many thousands of subscribers ago, so I think that this is a good time to readdress it. I've gotten um, some different opinionated comments about my channel name. Some of them, most of them, very positive, but uh, some of them not so positive, and that's okay, because I'm going to clarify for you right now why I am accidentally graceful. Um, before I was born, my mom wanted to name me um, after my Aunt Diane, and when I say name me, I mean my middle name. She already, my, my mom and dad already had agreed upon my first name. And so, um, my mom wanted to, my middle name to be named after my aunt, and my dad really wanted my middle name to be named after mm, his mom, so my grandmother. And so my mom kind of acquiesced, I guess? <laughs> I don't know. This is, this is the story that I've heard, so she decided, okay, that's, that's fine. And his mom's name was Grace. Or so he thought. Uh, it was not, in fact, Grace. It was Julia. And Grace was from his grandmother. And when my mom found this out, she cried for about three days because she hated the name Grace. She thought that it was just very old-fashioned and antiquated. She did not like it at all. And so that is basically why I am accidentally Grace full. And, uh, I don't know, I really liked that story, and I've, I've, um, I've struggled with trying to find grace throughout my life, uh, not just with God, but just with other people, and trying to find my, my inner grace. And it's been a struggle. <laughs> I used to joke about myself that my only consistency was my inconsistency, and I feel like I've like, I've evened out things through the years, but I'm still very inconsistent in many aspects of my life. And so that's kind of also kind of plays into the accidentally graceful aspect. Um, it's taken on another meaning to me the past few years. Um, pretty much the past year I've been thinking about it. And, uh, and that is that many of us Kind of discovered this ASMR community by complete accident. I did because I was looking for makeup tutorials that kind of gave me these tinkles in the back of my head and it kind of evolved into searching for sleep hypnosis and then voila I found this amazing video that was titled ASMR by this lady called Gentle Whispering who turned out to be my, like, sleep savior. I can take it, um, this kind of things with me anywhere and use it as, um, as an accent piece or something. She just opened, I mean, Maria, I, I know her by name now, but, like, I was stunned that other people experienced this feeling that I had experienced as long as I could remember. And I think that's kind of something that we all have in common is that we were looking for ways to relieve anxiety or depression or PTSD or to just help us focus better and study or just to sleep easier and stress less and we stumbled upon this beautiful place of peace and of solace and almost a, a sanctuary of sorts to some people, and I don't know, a place to soften the hardships that life can bring, and a place to find quiet and comfort when there's so much noise in the world, and, um, you know, a place to help us through those harder days, and a place where we got to know each other, and for some of us, for a lot of us, unexpected friendships grew. And the fact that I am accidentally graceful 
is kind of awesome. <laughs> it's kind of incredible to me. Um, because I accidentally stumbled upon this place of intentional grace. And I think a lot of us did. So that uh, <laughs> warms my heart in so many ways. So, um, yeah, I, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, believe that the day I found the ASMR community, my life changed for good and it changed for the better. So, if I haven't stressed this already, I just want to thank you from, from the depths of my soul for being on this journey with me. Whether you've been here four years ago or you've been here yesterday. And thank you for allowing me to be on this journey with you. Freaking cheers. My second most frequently asked question is, why do you whisper? Uh, ASMR bro. If you don't know, check out my description. If you don't look at that, you can Google search and you can find it. Um, yeah, but those are for like new, new people have never ever stumbled upon the ASMR community before. So yeah, but I get that question so much. I'm sure that most creators get that question a lot. Um, another common question that I get is what kind of camera I use. I use a Canon T3i. I have used a Canon T3i since the beginning of my channel and I recently got a Canon G5X for like my second camera angle, um, as well as just to have that autofocus, that continuous autofocus that my um, T3i does not have. Uh, I use a 50 millimeter, it's a Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 lens for um, some of my shots, like my Tingles in 10 videos when I want to have more bokeh or like more uh, background blur because it has a very shallow depth of field. That's the 1.8 part. And for most of my videos, I use what I'm using right now, which is the Sigma Zoom 17 to 50 millimeter 2.8 lens. And I really like that one because it's very versatile and you can zoom in and out. Um, yeah. And for anyone who wants to know about my lighting, I have two soft boxes. I have a little floor lamp that kind of lights me from behind, which I think is a very nice light. Uh, burnt orange is my favorite color ever because it's the color of the sunset and I love to incorporate that color in as many videos as I can. Um, so I started using that as kind of like my, um, I don't know, as like a backlight of sorts. And I used a, a Zoom H4n for um, my audio recording. I use it as like the field recorder and then I hook up Roland binaural mics, which is one right here and one right here. It's not exactly a binaural setup, but I really feel like it's close enough and I feel like the pan um, from one ear to the other is quite natural. Hopefully you think that too. I've gotten a lot of good comments on um, on my audio setup, and I definitely would like to upgrade eventually, but I like it right now. What's another? How well do you think a herd of vicious cat-sized zebra would do against one adult lion? Okay, Nick. Okay. Um, Jared asks, what is your favorite Led Zeppelin song? Um... I really like in the evening. I remember seeing the Pacific Ocean for the first time when I was listening to that song and it was a really miraculous moment because like the beginning of the song is very it's very slow build up and then it kind of and the Robert Plant's like in the evening <laughs> So that part is kind of like when the cliffs seem to I don't know, just move out of the way so I could see the Pacific Ocean. It was amazing. Um, I also really like uh, Crawl. I think all of the 
windows are in through the outdoor. So yeah, um, Akio Pringle asks, is there a way I can send you mail? That is actually another pretty common question. Um, I don't really have a public mailbox right now, but I think that I will in about three or four months, so sorry. If you can wait that long, that'd be awesome. Paralyzer asks, well, he says, no, thank you for joining us. Oh, I hope you're feeling better, beautiful. I guess that was one of the video updates where I wasn't feeling well. Someone told me you lived in Ireland, yet you are from Texas. Are you there studying? Take care. Keep up the good work. Español es un muy buen lenguaje para aprender. Gracias, Perlizer. Um, not really gracias. Yes, indeed. Si, sí, indeedo. Um, I do live in Ireland. I am from Texas. Um, the person who is now my, my husband, um, moved to Ireland in, uh, November of 2013 and asked me to come with him because we were madly in love. Uh, obs, obs. And that's why he later became my husband. But yeah, so I kind of followed him there. And I immediately said yes when he asked me, because why the hell not? Like Ireland, it's Ireland. It's the, it's the stuff dreams are made of. And I've really, I've really loved my stay here. And we're leaving actually later this year, um, TBD. So I've been here for two years, and that was always the plan. I was never planning on being like a permanent American expat, but. Um, It'll be very bittersweet, but I'm, I feel like my adventure here has come to a close and I feel like I'm ready to go back to Texas and kind of settle down and see what adventures await me there. Reese541 asks, what's the weirdest thing you've seen in Ireland? Um, I mean, driving on the left side of the road is pretty weird to me, but, uh, when I was walking in the city one day, I saw a sign that I genuinely thought was advertising for potato farts. Potato farts. Turns out it was not potato farts. It was potato farls, which is something I had never heard of before I moved here. Um, and I tasted them a few weeks ago and they're actually really good. But yeah. That's probably the weirdest thing that kind of threw me off. I don't know if it, it was the penmanship of the person who wrote it on the, on the chalkboard <laughs> or the fact that I've just never really seen Farls in that context before, but yeah. Yeah, I'd say the weirdest thing was thinking that I saw potato farts for sale in a restaurant. I really like this question. This is from quite a while ago from Daphne, and she says, Grace, I noticed that you put much thought into content and quality of your video, even though it's just you doing the final product. You don't compromise for gain or numbers, and I commend your integrity. Thank you, Daphne. My question is, do you feel pressured or tempted to turn up the volume by commercializing your product to reach higher numbers? What is the most important what is most important to you as an artist in this seemingly growing community? Oh, okay, so I don't feel pressured overall. Overall, no. Sometimes, um, I don't know, so sometimes I feel, I feel almost inspired by other content creators. I'm like, oh, that was really good, and I, I need to step up my game, you know? Um, but I, I wouldn't say that I, like, feel pressure to commercialize. Um, I've never taken on any sort of sponsorships, and I also don't think that that's wrong. I just haven't, um, I feel like when the time is right, I want to reach out to companies whose products I truly, uh, have tried and loved and believe in, and kind of come up with a, a discount code of sorts, and, um, 
like reach out to them instead of them reaching out to me because I feel like the companies who reach out to me are not offering products that are super ASMR friendly. Um, but I also just don't, I, I, I cannot make content that is commercialized because I, I have to kind of feel it. I have to feel like inspired to do it. Um, like I made a haircut roleplay, I, like a year and a half ago, and the haircut roleplay is very common in the ASMR community, so I don't think that I felt compelled to do it solely because of that, but I had remembered that I had footage of a dramatic haircut that a friend had um, filmed for me once, and I thought that that would be a really good way to make a haircut roleplay. So ultimately, no, I don't feel like pressured to, um, I kind of feel I have a huge list of ideas and, um, when I'm inspired to kind of work on one of those ideas, then I will. So, so yeah. And I also feel that, um, and I've mentioned this a few times before, but I, I feel that if I am not like feeling like I can help relax someone, that if I'm distracted or if I'm feeling stressed, I don't like to make videos. So, um, my upload schedule is quite inconsistent at times and I'm trying to work on, um, growing my capacity to film videos. Does that make sense? Shoot you. I'm trying to work on getting to that right frame of mind more often so I can make videos more often, but I don't like to rush it. So, yeah, I hope that, that answers your question. Um, the second question was, what is most important to you as an artist in this seemingly growing community? Well, it's definitely growing a lot, which is amazing. Um, I think the most important thing is to be making videos for the right reasons and I think ultimately that's to help people that's why I started just being true to yourself as well you know um don't force anything if you're not feeling it don't force it because I think a lot of viewers have that intuition and they can tell when 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 you're not all there I guess not not all viewers but I think some people can tell and that's why I don't like to make videos when I'm, when I'm not feeling it. <laughs> um, I mean, I try and, like, be as genuine as I can. Like, I'm not going to scream and yell, and I'm going to use a little more vocal variety than I would in, like, real-life conversations, but, but I feel like this part of me is real. It's, it's the part of me that's a hell of a lot more patient and, um, and, focused, but I still ultimately think that it's a part of me. Gosh, that was a long answer. I'm sorry. I hope that that was a good, that was a good answer. Kristen asks, do you recall your earliest memory of experiencing ASMR? This has been a pretty common question. Yes, I do. I was about five and one of my uh, childhood friends who I just became friends with we were playing tea time with plastic teapots and teacups, and she was pouring me imaginary tea. And I do allude to this in my first video ever that I ever made. But I, I just remember she she was pouring the tea, and as she was pouring, she was like, Ch -ch. and that feeling came over me, and I just had what I call the chills in the back of my head. And I so sleepy. I just wanted to go to sleep right then and there. And then she stopped and I was just like, um, uh, pour me a little more tea, will you? Because I just never wanted that feeling to end. So yeah, that was my, that was my first ASMR memory that I can recall. Deanna, or Dina, asks, uh, does your fiancé watch your videos? Mostly no. 
he unfortunately does not have the pleasure of experiencing ASMR. Although he does understand it, which is good. And so he doesn't think I'm a weirdo making, making videos, which is definitely a plus. Um, he likes to watch my softly spoken story series, like the fairy tale readings. So that's very good. Um, he is convinced that, that we're going to be compiling all those together and, um, having them available for our future children. So, so that's cute. And he likes, um, he likes the lullabies as well whenever I sing songs. So, but he's very, very supportive. And, um, if he, if I ever come into if I ever have any problems with like the technical side or I'm trying to brainstorm how something can work, he's always there to like help out like like the table that I have right now that I film a lot of my ASMR unfiltered videos with. Uh, he brought that from his office and built it for me so that I could have a darker table to work with instead of the white one I used to use, which some viewers said was a little bit too bright. So he's definitely, he's definitely always there to be like my little, little tech, my tech assistant. No, I'm just kidding. But essentially, yeah. Venomous asks, are you originally from Texas? Yes, I am. Born and raised. Ink Rapper has two questions. Is it weird that I fell in love or is that normal? Well, look at this face. Do you think that's normal? the next question is, after I heard my father entering my room and I opened another tab to midget porn, I don't know if I'd like where this is going, I have come to realize that in a time of crisis, I'd rather be caught watching midget porn than have anyone know I watch ASMR. Why is that? Uh, well, I would not do that. I, <laughs> hmm, this is a very interesting question. And I'm so sorry if anyone is offended by it. Um, I'm going to answer this. I think it's because ASMR is not understood by the masses yet, and it's a very personal, intimate experience. And while most people don't watch it um, for sexual reasons, it's still such an intimate kind of experience between the viewer and the creator that it seems close to porn. I cannot tell you how many porn comments I get. Like, oh, this is some weird porn. This is some weird fetish. And someone on Reddit once made an amazing, amazing point that a foot, for example, is part of our anatomy. And it's not sexual at all, but there are foot fetishists out there who sexualize a foot. And I think it's the same with ASMR. I think that innately, I know I could be wrong because it's not been researched yet, but for me, ASMR is not an innate sexual feeling at all, but it's such an intimate feeling that it's very, it's very ineffable to, it's just a very ineffable feeling. It's very hard to define or describe. So while it's not innately sexualized, it can be just like anything else. You monster. So yeah, I think I digressed a little bit, but I hope that that answers your question. While it's not like a sexual kind of feeling, watching someone being very close to you, giving you a, um, shaving your beard is just a very, it's an intimate act and it looks like it is sexual, but to outsiders and to skeptics, but for most of us, it's really not. So, I hope that answers your question. Tomato of Doom asks what kind of voiceovers I do. Uh, I don't do a whole lot, but I do some commercial voiceovers. So, like, um, for car dealerships, I've done a major um, oil and gas company voiceover. And I just do kind of random ones, but they're mostly radio advertisements. Um... And I most recently have 
done a long-term project called The Diary, which is a YouTube web series created by Gusick. Um, and that's been a lot of fun. And that is like a season. It's like a whole season of voiceover. So um, it has like 30 episodes. So I'll link that down below, but um, that's been a lot of fun. And I start working on that again in like July or August. So that's very cool. But yes, I do very sporadic ones from time to time. Seal588 once asked, what's with the voices? And when I asked him to expound, he said that I use this um, Sean Connery kind of voice from time to time, or I use my, my, little, my little voice from time to time. So I'm assuming that's what he was talking about. Um, and he asked if I normally do that in my day-to-day -day life, and I can answer you with complete confidence that yes, I do, and my husband can also attest to that fact. I use all kinds of voices throughout the day. Well, maybe not all kinds of voices, but I focus on about two or three. Yeah, I keep those close by. But yeah, that's definitely not part of my YouTube persona. That's something that I kind of throw out there frequently in my normal day-to-day -day life. Stephanie asks, how do you make your videos? Do you film the actual video, then record the voiceover separately? Um, it depends on the video. So sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, like for my Tingles and 10 videos, I record everything and then I edit it and then I lay over the voiceover. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see. What kind of software do I use? I forgot to mention that with the equipment. I use the Adobe Premiere. Um, well, I use the Adobe Cloud system. Does that make sense? So I use Adobe Premiere CC for my editing of videos. I use Adobe Audition for editing voiceovers. 96 Donovan asks, do you ever put yourself to sleep making these? No, I do not. ASMR, like trying to self-induce ASMR is like trying to tickle yourself. It doesn't really happen very often. <laughs> I've only gotten ASMR once from editing my own video, and that was when I put Foley over the haircutting sounds in my haircut video. That was very cool. I was just watching. And I actually was feeling very sleepy, and I was like, no, you have to keep editing. Amanda asked, um, you said that you used to bite your nails like crazy, and sister, I know what you mean, I do it too, but how long did it take for you to stop? Um, I used to have very, very short nails. I don't know if you can tell. If you can tell. I can't focus on this camera, so... Um, I used to bite them like crazy, and then I kind of, after I saw Maria Gentle Whisperings videos and saw her pretty nails and how she could tap effectively on objects and they would actually make sounds and, and not just like these little nubs like what my nails were doing because I, they were so, so, so short. Uh, I got acrylic nails so I could get out of the habit of biting them and then I went through a round of shellac which are gel nails so I have about what a month a month and a half total and honestly by then I saw like how long my real nails could be and I was very excited by that so I just stopped getting manicures pretty much all together and maintained my own and learned how to file them the way I liked to file them and the rest is history <laughs> and I'm really glad I stopped because first of all biting your nails is not very hygienic and secondly they look real pretty I mean not maybe not now they're a little bit short but when I put some you know put a little bit of shiny top coat on them and stuff they look very nice so I'm really, really happy. Like, that investment of, like, two manicures was totally, totally worth it. Um, hello there. Did you train your voice to sound like that? 
This is from Hari and Jiva Kumar. Uh, or is that your natural voice? I don't usually comment these things on the internet, but you have a very nice voice. Thank you. Um, this is a, this is like a, <laughs> it's like when you wear makeup. This is like my voice with makeup. So it's, it's of course much softer than it, it would really be in real life. I can be really loud and obnoxious in real life. And I would, I, I would even say that it's almost brighter than my normal voice. Because I can get kind of low and talk like this when I'm, when I'm just, <laughs> I don't know what kind of face that was, but, um, my voice can have a very low kind of sound. But, uh, so I would say it's a little brighter and it certainly has more vocal variety when I'm speaking softly. Of course, not whispering because there's no, there's no tone there. But, um, yeah, I don't know if that, yeah, I think that that answers your question. It's also the kind of voice that I always talk in when I'm speaking to, um, like people on the phone and stuff. I don't know. It's like, it's almost, it's like my polite voice, but with a little more vocal variety. So yeah, like I said, it's like my voice with makeup on. It's like a little bit enhanced. I hope that makes sense. And I also want to add that I have found that my voice has changed a little bit from when I started making videos. Um, when I started making videos, it was a little bit um, like darker of a tone. It was kind of like, hi, thank you for this. And it didn't sound like I was ever smiling. So that bright timbre that I try to use is just a I don't know, I feel like it sounds more positive. And I've noticed that um, quite a few creators, it kind of takes um, several videos for them to kind of find a voice that they're comfortable with using when it comes to ASMR videos. So it's interesting if you go back to the beginning of their channel and kind of hear um, their, <laughs> their ASMR voice journey, uh, as it were. I find that kind of interesting. This is pretty new. This is from Tony A.R. who says, do you want to be my girlfriend? I don't know, Tony. Like, I want to say yes, but I feel like my husband would not be happy with that, so. So sorry. Casey Silverman says, oh, she has a few questions. What type of music do you listen to? Um, pop is always going to be up there because it's just so catchy and fun to listen to. Um, I like, uh, quite a bit, I would say, of classic rock. Um, I like Led Zeppelin. I like a little bit of Pink Floyd. I like Boston because they just have really catchy stuff. Um, I like a few of the Beatles songs. Sorry, I'm not like a huge Beatles fan. I like Led Zeppelin a little bit more. Um, but honestly, I would say that the, the music that really takes me to a different place is like indie folk music. Um, there is this song called Spirit Cold that I found through a video a few months ago. It was like a wedding video. Who is it by? I can't remember who it's by. Spirit Cold is the name of this, the track. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And I also love Feist. I adore her music. I love her style. Um, I like some of Lana Del Rey as well, but I need to explore her music further because I only know a few songs. So yeah, um, I like a little bit of country, but not much. Um, but I, I don't really listen to, and I'm not gonna lie, I like me some Taylor Swift, okay? So, sorry if that like offends anyone. I don't know why you would be offended by that, but I think that she does have a lot of talent with her songwriting. I think that she can be hit or miss because shake it off. Okay. But some of her songs are gorgeously written. Um, and I really like, oh, what was I going to say? I really like, I like Coldplay a lot as well. And I really like, um, One Republic. I was going to say that I don't, I don't, f 
focus on like the entire album. I kind of listen to music based on my mood. So I kind of have playlists like um, Fight or Flight, which is, I don't know, the kind of Banff music that I like to listen to when I'm on an airplane. Or, you know, Work It Out, which is when I'm like in a dance mood. Or Let's Feel Good for when I want to get pumped and get in a good mood. Or Contemplative, you know, Think About It for like my more somber moods when I just want to like watch the rain or take the bus and just think about my life. Yeah, I'm very dramatic, guys. I'm very dramatic. Uh, yeah. Can you please make a shout out to me? Hey, girl. Hey, Casey Silverman. How you doing, girl? Hee <laughs> hee. Love from the Philippines. Oh, wow. Cool. Well, hello, Casey. Cassie. I hope it's Casey. Maybe it's Cassie. All the way from the Philippines. Um, what? Favorite movie? Um, off the top of my head, I can think of two. Them being The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. The, yeah, the new one. The newer one with Ben Stiller. Oh, I love that movie so much. And Beauty and the Beast because I've loved that since I was a little girl. Um, yeah. I don't, it's really hard to pick a favorite because there are kind of flavors of the week. But since I saw The Secret Life of Walter Mitty in 2014, I just love it. Oh, I adore that movie so much. What is your favorite type of tea? Starbit15 asks. This is a good question. I like all the teas. Um, I have a soft spot for Earl Grey tea. Um, because the first time I tried it, it was with lemon squares, which that combination is heavenly. So delightful. Um, but I also just like plain English breakfast tea. I find that Irish breakfast tea is quite strong, um, so I try not to steep that for very long. For health benefits, I really like green tea. Um, and matcha green tea. And I like, uh, I like herbal tisanes as well, but those aren't really considered teas, so, yeah, I'll move on. <laughs> Daniel M196 asks, if you had one dollar for every subscriber you had, what would you spend it on? I would make a freaking movie. Yeah. Um, realistically, I would make a movie. Um, but equipment-wise, I would soundproof my room. And I know that people say that ambient noises are nice, but they're just... Like, I want to put in my own ambient noises if I choose to, you know? Like cars driving by and planes. I just really like that nice... That, that nice noise-free sound, just very pure and professional sounding. I love that. So, yeah, I would have a complete soundproof room. I would probably upgrade my audio equipment. I would buy a 4K camera. Oh my gosh, you guys. And I would make an ASMR movie. So, why don't you just start donating a dollar to me right now? No, I'm just kidding. No, but do. Alan Nightingale, hey, I know him, um, says, ooh, this is, this is like a tricky one. If you had two pieces of the most delicious chocolate on earth and two friends were coming over, would you A, eat none and give a piece to each friend, B, eat one and let them share the other, or C, eat both and not say a word? I would say that, first of all, it depends on the time of month. But secondly, besides that, I really want to say that I would, I would say a word, I'd be really excited to be like, you guys, this is the most delicious chocolate in the world, and I really want you to experience this. But I might say eat one and let them share the other, because how would they know it's the most delicious chocolate without me vouching for it, you know? 
that's selfless. Martina McGrath asks, what triggered your ASMR as a child? Well, what I said earlier, the, the imaginary teach, but um, whenever I got personal attention from the receptionist at the doctor's office, I would get major ASMR because they would say, um, like, okay, so just sign here and here to here, right here. And they would, like, with a pen, kind of, or a, or a highlighter, highlight the areas that I needed to sign. Um, obviously, I wasn't that young. I was, like, a teenager, but it was always female. Um, Judge Judy really triggered my ASMR. She's such a harsh lady, but there are moments when she's very delicate with looking through the, the papers or the, I don't know, the affidavits or the, um, the, the filings or whatever. So she would just kind of look through them and just say, okay, oh, okay. And I really liked that. Um did I have? I just, my mom, when she would draw a bath and I had to go to bed, I would listen to it and it would actually give me ASMR. It was so relaxing. It sounded like a waterfall and I loved that. Um, but yeah, because, this is a slight digression, but because females only triggered my ASMR, I kind of, when I was little, thought that I was attracted to females sexually and I was like, oh, am I, am I a lesbian then? Because like I get these chills in the back of my head when I, when, when certain like females are around and they were always of course like just, you know, they're receptionists so they're really cute and, and sweet and so I just thought that I was attracted to them. That's what I thought ASMR was. But then I realized that I had no sexual feelings or desire. I just, I just really got sleepy and just really relaxed and it was just this wonderful, blissful feeling. So, yeah. Ashley Lutka asks, what is your favorite type of tea or flavor? Answered that, but then she asks, favorite tea company? Hmm. I kind of liked Tiavana for a little while, but then, um, I don't know, I read that they used a lot of artificial ingredients in their tea, so I didn't like that very much. And the same with Celestial Seasonings. But I very much like Numi tea. They have organic tea. And I think that organic isn't always um, necessary, but I do think that for tea it is, because there are significantly less pesticides, They've done studies that while, like, aluminum and, I'm not really sure, other, other metals are in organic tea, there's less trace of arsenic, which, I don't know, I think is a pretty big deal. So I really like Numi, and they have really nice flavors. Curdo, Curdoat, Curdo, 2011, asks, how supportive is your husband towards your ASMR vids? Um, I answered that a little bit already, but he's very supportive. Um, he's, he's always been that kind of partner and I've actually been dating him pretty much since the beginning of my channel. Um, well, we were friends for the first year, but I've known him and been friends with him since, um, the beginning of my channel. And he always thought it was kind of cool, <laughs> but, um, no, he's very supportive. He's the kind of person who would support any dream of mine. Like, he sits down and figures out how we can make it work. Like, I've had so many frustrations um, with just us renting a house and, and cars driving by, and, and since we're renting, we're not able to, um, to properly insulate and soundproof my little workspace room, so I've been very frustrated, but he's always been there to say, okay, how can we make this better? And, and brainstorming with me and figuring out how to, how to get my videos or how to get, I don't know, the technical aspect on par with how I want. <laughs> I have very, very, very high expectations. There's this meme that shows like, 
client expectations versus client reality, like for media production companies, and that is so me. Um, but yeah, he's, he's very supportive. What movies do you watch? Um, kind of talked about my favorite movies earlier, but I, uh, I like adventure. Um, not sci-fi so much, but I like adventure. Uh, I really like Hook. Uh, I really like thriller movies. Not gruesome, like, slasher movies or movies with a whole lot of sadistic behavior because then it just, I don't know, the empathetic part of me dies and it's horrible. Um, I just like blood-curdling screams like, no, 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 that's not okay. It's just too much for me, for my little heart to bear. Because I think about me being in that situation or like my family and it's terrible. Anyway, this is not relaxing to talk about. Um, so I like those. I like some horror movies. I like, you know, like, I like romantic comedies. They're nice. They're just, I really like Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I forgot to mention that. That's probably one of my favorite movies. And this one I'm a little bit... Um, I'm a little bit, it's like a guilty pleasure, but I love Couples Retreat. It is not a very well-written movie to me at all, but I just love that everyone ends up staying together and being happy in the end. It's like the most unrealistic thing, but it makes me so happy. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then the last thing he asks is, have you read The Secret by Rhonda Byrne? No. Is it good? I don't know. Um, Tinkle Bell ASMR, aww, asks, has your family or close friends always known about your ASMR channel? If so, how did they originally feel about it? Um, like, my family pretty much knows the gist of it. Only, like, my mom and dad and a few of my cousins know, like, the details about it. But, um, my dad kind of surprised me with it one day. He was like, oh, I watched your video the other day, honey. And I was just like, what? <laughs> what? How do you, how do you know? How are you watching it? And, uh, yeah, he, he says that he finds it very relaxing. And, um, and yeah, he, he watches, like, all of them. Maybe not the whole entirety of the videos, but he... He gets notifications on his phone, so he'll check them out and be like, Oh, I liked your video the other day, honey. That's how he talks. That's that's my dad persona. <laughs> and he's such a hoot. Um, but he's really proud of me, and, and he says that he likes to watch my videos when I'm, you know, because when he misses me, you know, he likes to think that I'm there when he's watching my videos. It's kind of adorable. Um, so, yeah, I mean... They're confused about it to an extent, but mostly I kind of explain it like I make videos for relaxation. And most of my family and friends know the concept of YouTube, so they don't, like, wonder why people subscribe or, like, what's the point of everything revolving around YouTube, so that's good. What are the triggers you hate the most? By Sans the Skeleton. I don't like intentional lip smacking or mouth sounds at all. I, they give me misophonia, unfortunately. I just kind of want to punch a wall when I hear them. So I really try not to watch them, especially when creator or when content creators that I really like are making them because you get this very aggressive feeling when you hear triggers that you don't like and you almost take it out on the creator, so I don't like that. I try to avoid those like the plague. Um, I guess I don't, I don't like repetitive tapping, but it's certainly not a trigger that I hate because I really like them when they're in role plays. I'm trying to think of, I don't really like unintelligible whispering because for some reason it gives me like anxiety that I don't But I don't, I don't like it. Kim Do-yun. 
also Juni L asks, can you wear glasses more often in your upcoming videos? Well, as a matter of fact, I can. Because they are right here. Is that better? <laughs> um, would you prefer dogs, cats, or hamsters? Please answer. Pleads Ryan Yorkman. Um, I love dogs. I've had a dog um, most of my life. I have a puppy now. Well, she's not a puppy. She's four, but I call most dogs puppies. Her name is Roxy, and I love her. She's my muse. And I like cats, but my husband thinks we'll never get one. But we'll see about that. We'll see. I'm just going to say it right here. I really, really, really want a cat that wears a bow tie, and he will be black and white and have a little black spot on his nose. And his name will be Walter. And then I will say, this is the secret life of Walter Kitty. Okay, you heard it here. So, uh, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. So. Oh, I don't know. I guess they're okay. They're a little bit smudgy. But they do help me see better. So, what did you want to be when you were growing up? I'm guessing it wasn't a some artist. P.S. You are definitely my, my favorite by far. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I wanted to be a singer or a professional basketball player <laughs> and for about mm, for about seven months I wanted to be an ice skater I really shifted through a few things and I wanted to be an actor but not like a Hollywood actor I wanted to be like a theater actor when I was a teenager and a young adult um yeah I really liked basketball. I would love to do an ASMR basketball lesson, but uh, I don't have the means to do that right now because the, I don't know of any gyms around that have a basketball court, but in the future, it's going to happen and it's going to be great. I mean, like, I'm not very good anymore, but the muscle memory is still there and I loved playing basketball, um, but it was a long time ago. It was when I was in middle school and a little bit of high school. So, will you be sticking around in Ireland for the near future slash rest of life, or will you have to return to Texas? Asks Squigglehead. Um, I think I mentioned this earlier. We are moving back. It's kind of our choice. Just felt that it was the right time, and it kind of fits the timeline that we were already thinking of. We're moving back later this year. What are your favorite triggers? Ah, oh, let's see. I really like papers, shuffling, especially like in a role play. I love, love role plays, especially when they're very naturally done. I feel like I can get totally immersed in what's happening. Um, so I like role plays. I like personal attention is great. Um, I just like certain trigger words, like. Okay, perfect, great, great, just stuff like that, and um, I like um, tapping, kind of like, just like a, okay, so we're just gonna do that, and yeah, I mean, just something really subtle, but um, I find that repetitive triggers don't work as much for me. Um, there's a just a, a soft-spoken voice is my favorite. I don't actually like whispering. Uh, there are only a few whisper voices that I can, I don't know, that my ASMR brain can tolerate, which is unfortunate because, I mean, the ASMR community was originally the whisper community, so... But yes, I definitely prefer a soft-spoken voice to a whisper. Which is why until recently, I mostly spoke softly and didn't whisper. Ma Jo asks, what do you think about having appeared in Fine Bros and the reaction of people? Um, I got like a lot of 
WTF is this? This is creepy comments. But other than that, I was like, I got a lot of subscribers from that video. I was freaking out. I was getting ready for bed when I saw it. I was getting ready for bed and I um, got a comment from someone saying, oh, I just saw you on, I, I came here from the Fine Brothers. So I was like, oh, okay, let me check that out. So I did. And once I saw the video, once I saw that my, my name was in the description and then I saw my video pop up, I started squealing like really loudly, like so girly. And my husband like ran upstairs and was like, my dear, are you okay? And I was like, I'm good. I'm good, man. And then I told him and he didn't really get it, but he was like, oh, that's great. So, um, oh, Rhiannon Pendragon, Pendragon, Pendragon asks, uh, your favorite movie, book, and TV show, and your favorite tale from the Irish folklore. <sighs> My favorite book, I don't read a whole lot, and it's not because I don't want to, it's because I feel like I lack focus, and I have other things that I want to do. Like, I'm a multitasker, and I multitask horribly, but, so I... Probably need to get into audible.com like the audiobooks because I want to read but anyway I really liked The Help I really liked The Fault in Our Stars I really liked Paper Towns by John Green and that was recently adapted into a film which I'll be quite honest I absolutely hated <laughs> and I'm so sorry if that offends anyone but I just thought that the book was written so much better my favorite movie, uh, like I said earlier, Secret Life of Walter Mitty is one of them. And my favorite tale from the Irish folklore is the one that I read, is the one that I told in my Stories of Samhain video, which is the one about um, the fairy fort where the protagonist sings Deluin de Mar, Deluin de Mar, Deluin de Mar, Decating. I really like that one because I like I like to sing so I like incorporating both um, singing and storytelling together I thought that, that was a really good one what is your favorite series I'm assuming TV series and I absolutely adore the office the US version sorry to all of you out there who prefer the UK version I watched that whole series and I did not care for it as much as I cared for the American version of The Office. Love it. Love it. Love it. I'm eventually going to make a best quotes of The Office ASMR style video, which I'm very excited about. Um, so expect that in like two years because I always say that I'm planning videos and then you don't see them. I also really love Jane the Virgin. Oh my gosh, I love that show. I discovered that show in a time in my life when I needed it desperately. It was right after Christmas and I just, I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, and I just, I don't know, it's just a very wholesome, interesting com comedy, comedy drama? What is it? like a telenovela kind of, I love that. What's another one that I like? Um, I'm ashamed to say that I used to really like Gossip Girl, and I only discovered it right before it ended, so. And then I watched Pretty Little Liars in a time in my life when I really needed distraction as well, so there's that. What else do I like? Hold on. I know that there are more that I like. I used to love Dexter, and then that ended horribly. That was very sad at the ending. Um, I liked Breaking Bad. I got into that like a season before it ended. And um, I'm still not into Game of Thrones, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I like Big Bang Theory. But yeah, The Office. Even though it kind of 
kind of got the writing wasn't so great after Michael Scott left, spoiler alert, I still stuck it out till the end and I was really happy that I did because I just, the last episode is beautiful. It's beautiful. And yeah, The Office is life, basically. So, The Office, Auntie, and Prosecco. Facundo Peralta says, how long are you studying Spanish? It's really good. You speak very, very nice. I'm from Argentina and your Spanish sounds really good. Have you visited any country that speaks Spanish? Sorry about my English. Um, no he practicado mucho y ya me he olvidado de lo que sabía. Tengo que volver al estudio del inglés. Saludos desde Argentina. Gracias. Um, I studied it in high school for, I think, two years, and then I studied it for a semester in college, and then kind of as a refresher course, I took non-accredited courses a year and a half ago. So it's been a hot minute, but I really do like the language. I like Italian very much as well, and I find that they do have quite a few similarities, although they have quite a few differences well, and I very much like, I've not been to Spain, I've only been there um, like for 10 minutes during a layover, uh, but I really, really want to go to Barcelona, Barcelona, and uh, Madrid, and I want to go to places in Mexico, because Mexico-based Spanish and like, um, Central America, like the dialect is different everywhere, and it's like English. If you if you are from Texas and you go to California or you go to Ireland or the UK, the English is just different everywhere. So I'm assuming that's the same with every language, especially a widely spoken one like uh, Spanish. So um, I would love to go to Spain, but to actually speak the language, I guess I would like to go somewhere in Mexico. just my, my Spanish chops there. But I, I did learn like Spain Spanish a year and a half ago for those non-accredited courses, so yes. Oh, I'm taking such a long time with these questions. Uh, Celica Sanchez asks, are you and your husband planning on having kids anytime soon? Um, we're, we're not exactly planning on having them, but whatever happens, happens, and we're happy to, we're, we're happy about having children. We definitely would like to have children in the future. There we go. And did you go to college? Yes, I did go to college, and I have a degree. Mila Blomberg asks, what's your favorite kind of food? I used to say pizza. And now I would probably say veggie burgers and sushi. I am obsessed with salmon nigiri and I just want to go to Japan and eat sushi all the days. I know that you guys don't actually eat sushi that often, but <sighs> sushi. Oh, I forgot that in my little hashtag. Sushi is life. Yeah, salmon nigiri all the way. Um, yeah, so I really like veggie burgers. I just started eating them a little while ago, and I just really like them. I just think they're very flavorful. They have all these beans and lentils and stuff, and they're very good. And I also really like mayonnaise. Like, really. <laughs> mayonnaise is amazing. Hey, Grace, did you take singing lessons because your voice is magical? Oh, thank you, but no, it's not. It takes me forever to warm up and to feel like I can sing properly. Were you in drama and choir in high school? Um, I started uh, being in local plays when I was 15, and I really liked it, and I wanted to be a local actor. I majored in theater, and then I, I don't know, I kind of fell out of love with it. I miss acting, don't get me wrong, but 
I, um, I really like filming better. I love being behind the scenes. But I still get that, like, itch to act every once in a while. And no, I was not in choir, but I loved to harmonize. I used to write songs and make up melodies and stuff. Random Man 681 asks, Why are you so beautiful? Stop. Stop it. Stop. You're making me blush. Keep going. That is about all I have for you, you guys. Um, thank you so much to people who asked me questions. Um, I'm really, hopefully I helped you to get to know me a little bit better. A butterfly just fell, so I'm assuming that that's my cue to go. Uh, I hope that you like my little setup back here. Um, I kind of wanted to break up the monotony of the, I don't know, the monochromatic wall back here. Um, but it's a little bit problematic because butterflies keep falling. So that's very unfortunate and tragic. But um, thank you so much for watching. Um, again, thank you for sending in these questions. I hope that I answered most of them. I don't know when I will do another Q&A video, if ever, but I hope that you enjoyed this, and, um, and I just want to thank each and every one of you who have subscribed to my channel once again. Thank you so much. You have no idea, like, how happy that made me seeing my channel get to six digits. Like, when I first started my channel, I'm, I know that I thought about what it would be like if this day ever came, but I can definitely say that I never actually thought that I would get here. So here is to the future, because the best is yet to come. Um, cheers in Ireland, Slancha. Have a wonderful, restful, peaceful day.